enjoy this. I'll see you soon. Yeah, I'm sweating. I miss you. After the death of the king of Umuizu kingdom, it takes four years for another king to emerge. Next year is the fourth year. So why are you bothered, my prince? You're the heir apparent to the throne, and by next year, you're going to become king. Or are you trying to tell me that you're scared of becoming a king? My mother has a part to play in who becomes the next king. Tradition has it that she has to bless the said son before he is crowned king. Uh, yes, I know. So, are you trying to tell me that your mother is not willing to bless you? That is where the problem is. She favors my younger brother, Mara. And it is very worrying. Should I tell you the truth, my prince? You don't have any reason to be bothered. You see, um, we have a tradition, and there's no way Her Majesty is going to change that tradition. Continue to see yourself as the next king of Umuezu. Tradition must definitely prevail. My mother hates me with a passion. She hates me so much. And I just don't understand why. I'm lost, Victor. What exactly are you talking about? Can you hammer the point? I was with your mother yesterday and she was unhappy. Why would she not be happy? Things couldn't be better at this point. The family business has more than quadrupled its, its fortunes. I mean, we're doing over 600% in profit. Plus, she gets 3 million naira every month. Apart from that, she has information, access to every information regarding the family business. She's a quintessential society woman. What more can a woman ask for? A mother for that matter. You are bringing materialism into this. Her current state of unhappiness has nothing to do with material things. Alright. Indulge me, Victor. What possibly could be her problem at this point? Why is she unhappy? You are the one she favors as the next king. And she's not happy with the fact that you have not been carrying yourself as the next king. She said you are now into women. And, and it's making her very uncomfortable and unhappy. You know, if you weren't my best friend, my childhood friend, I'll kick you out of my house this instant. You went to my mother to discuss my private life. Is that it? I'm sorry, my prince, for you to ever think I went to meet your mother. You're wrong. I was on my own and she sent someone to come and call me. I went to see her and then she started complaining about you not carrying yourself as the next king. The chief reason my mother called you Victor because she knows you're my childhood friend. And I confide in you. Now, it's imperative you tell me what you said to her. What was your response when she complained? I don't understand the question. The question is as simple as it was asked. What did you respond to my mother's complaints? That's what I asked. Who am I to talk back at the Queen of Umeze Kingdom? I only listened to her all through. 
That's why I I I I, I brought out time to pay you a visit today. She, she she you have to impress her. You have to start to impress her. She's not happy. You know what? I live the way I should. What does she want from me? What do they all want? I should exist in that prehistoric way all the others do. Just fit into the status quo. I'm different. And I'm happy being different. I'm sorry, Prince. But you are wrong. You are royalty. And you can't afford to do anything different from the established norms. Is that right? Yes. I'm the master of my fate. My guy, your time is up. Stop moving. I'm sure you heard me. You need to move. Go back there. Live your life the way you should and keep your nose out of my business. You know I was in the middle of something before you got here. Thank you for your visit. Draw by any time. You know I'm doing anything for you. It's so nice to see you out. Girls! I'll tell you what I All over the world, the queen is a mother to all. Are you in any way saying I'm not a mother? You are uh, gradually trying to usurp the powers of the ruling class. And this to me is a complete departure from what a queen should be. Four months from today, a king will be crowned in Umwezu. Are you aware that whoever is going to be crowned needs my blessing? What has that got to do with the issue under discussion? Are you aware that whoever emerges as a king needs my blessings and approval? A king can emerge without the approval of the queen, your majesty. I want you to come out clear. Are you saying that the council could crown someone without my approval? In four months today, we shall be faced with the task of crowning a king. When that time comes, a king must emerge, irrespective of who gave her approval or not. I am the traditional prime minister of this kingdom, and I will want this matter not discussed any further. Anyway, whoever must be crowned must be one of my sons. Not just one of your sons. Your first son, Prince Abelunama, will be crowned king. And everyone in the ruling class is aware of this. Oh no. I have come to solicit for your support. I will pay you. I will pay you very, very well. I, I want you to work for me. What do you want from me? No, I am not comfortable with crowning Obelanama. I favor Mora. We are the authority that we crown whoever is accepted. Please, I, I want you to crown Mora for me, please. I am not asking for time, but I'm afraid, Your Majesty. What you want me to do is impossible. We have a precedent. The first son will be crowned king, provided he's sound and competent. Obel Namma is to be crowned the king, and there's practically nothing we could do to change it. I'm sorry, Your Majesty. You can't bribe me. Okay, okay. okay. I, will, I will increase the offer. I, I just want you to work for me, please. It's not what you offer that it's important. We have a laid down standard that we follow. And I can't change such standard. Good afternoon, Your Majesty. Your father has refused to work for me. I called to ask for your support. 
Your Majesty, I'm at your service. What do you want me to do for you? Sit down. Thank you, Your Majesty. I want you to talk to your father. A woman that gave birth to two sons knows what they can do at any situation. More and Abel and Amma are my sons. And I know who amongst them will make a better king for Umwezu. Your Majesty, all the age grades in Umwezu have been briefed that Abel and Amma would be crowned the next king. And they all accord him his rightful respect. And you listen to me, Mangene. I've already offered five billion naira to your father. I am ready to increase it to ten million naira. Mora is the one I want to be the next king of Umez. Your Majesty, an offer of ten million naira? That's quite generous. I'm a woman of my words. Mora will make a better king. That is why I want him on that throne. Get your father on my side, and the money will be yours. Your Majesty, I'll be on my way now. Your offer is excellent. Very soon, I'll get back to you with good news. Thank you, Your Majesty. Father, should I go back and tell her we are not ready to work for her? His Royal Majesty, Ekulu Kawaralu of Umwezu, was very blunt. He referred to them as forces aimed at destroying this kingdom. I will not soil my hand with things that are of no benefit to my people. Father, look, we don't have to go for this again. The Queen is ready to offer us 10 million naira. And you cannot turn down such a huge offer because of what a dead man said. 10 million naira is not 10,000 naira. That money is able to turn our lives around. Are you telling me that you value money more than the tradition of your people? Father, it's not about what I value and what I don't value. Yes, I'm concerned with the money. Moreover, she's asking you to crown a bona fide citizen of this community. Shut up! The soul she's asking us to support is not to be crowned king. Abel Namma is the confirmed king, and everyone in this society should support him. Father, I have not seen one single thing you have gained from this your support of Abel Namma. Hmm. I may not gain anything physical. I am defending this kingdom from forces aimed at destroying it. I have my conscience, and that is enough gain. You're not talking like a politician. Look, today's world has been reduced to politics. And politics means paying heavy attention to things that produce money. That is what we are talking about here. The Queen is willing to offer us 10 million naira. Why don't we just grab it and do what she wants? Today is the third time that you're asking me not to run for the kingship of Umoezu Kingdom. What is your reason? Sweetie, I don't know what you want to gain from that kingship position. You're rich by every definition of that word. So I, I think it's right for you to remain here and run your business. Helen, I don't know how royalty is defined where you come from. But it's a whole different standard where I come from. Royalty, no more is this big business. How do you think I became so rich? It's because of my royal background. Listen. There's a diamond mine in Umwezi. And whoever becomes king will own it. Do you think I don't know your family business? Sweetie, I know more than you think I do. Okay? Listen, I don't just want you to be king because there is no way you double into kingship tussle 
without getting involved in charms. I don't want you to get involved in charms. Okay? Mom? You begin to warn me, Helen. You begin to sound like you're not committed to my future. Why are you talking like this? I am extremely committed to your future and that's why I'm telling you to shove this idea of aspiring to be a king. You may die in the process and I don't want to lose you. You still don't understand, do you? Well, let me paint the right scenario for you. I am a prince. And not just any prince, Helen, a prince of the kingdom of Umwezen. There's no mortal that can harm me. I will die when it's my time. And that has been defined from time immemorial. I'll be king because it's my birthright. And there's nobody living or dead that will dissuade me from being king. Do you understand? I know, I know. This is good. Seriously, girls, I don't know what you guys are talking about. You're embarrassing me, mm -hmm. and I don't like it. I want to ask you a question, Helen. Is there anything you have on this your body that we boots don't have? So why are you always parading yourself as if you're better than everybody? Why? Judith, Judith. Girl, you're still not making sense to me. Oh. And what do you mean I'm parading myself? <laughs> so you don't know what I mean, right? <laughs> I see. It's obvious that some people might have told you that you can seduce him into an unpopular marriage by throwing yourself to him. I'm warning you, I know more Ramo than you do and he will never marry you. He won't! Judith! Judith, you're really, really getting on my nerves and... Come on, warn this girl. I go beat you. No, no, no. I'm not, I go, you know me now, I'm not beat you. being a fiddle girl. You're so dead wrong. She's not insulting you. No! Even you? I'm telling you what I know. Ha! You're pushing yourself at him and it has become very imperative to remind you that we are here to make money. I repeat. Make money and not to donate ourselves to anybody. Ha! Ah! Hmm. Ah! Ah! If the prince hears what you just said, he's gonna be very disappointed at you. Oh, really? <laughs> and wait, what do you mean I'm donating myself to him? You don't know what she means, right? <laughs> Girl, we are talking to you in private because we believe you would listen. But if you don't want to listen, forget it. When all your fingers are burnt, you just have only one person to blame, and that is yourself. Yourself. What kind of nonsense is this? Sit, sit down, down and listen. listen. Yeah. I am offering you 10 million naira. Just assure me that you will crown my son, Mora, the king of Umwezu. Has it ever been reported to you that I'm the kind of man you can bribe? I am going to clarify things immediately. I have not come to destroy. On the contrary, I want to make use of every power within my reach to make sure that things are done the right way. <sighs> Accept the millionaire and you become 10 millionaire richer. Do you know why Obelunama survived the plane crash that the old people on board died? He survived because he had the mark of a king. The truth is that he will not die until he is made king here in Umwezu. Why are you trying to deny him of his rights? I'm sorry, you know. But why are you bringing strange belief into this? Eh? Why can't you be objective for once? I am very objective. I'm telling you what I know. He did not die because he has been marked the crown prince. I am telling you, he can't be king. Why can't you open your eyes and understand that I'm not opposing him for nothing? Can you tell me why you are opposing the decision of your late husband? Good. Some men are born into their families by an express act of nature. I call them sons. Some are born into their families by an act of mistake. I call them intruders. Do you know who? 
must make sure that mistake is not respected more than nature. Well, I don't know what you mean by that. Obelunama is the crown prince and there's nothing we can do. Your strange lecture of sons and intruders cannot change it. Welcome, Your Majesty. Your Majesty, I want you to increase the offer. My father will consider it if you increase the amount. Will you shut up and speak not for me? Uh, offer has been increased to 15 million naira. 15? Just assure me that you are ready to crown my son Mora the king of Umezu. 15 million naira. Your Majesty, don't worry. Don't worry. Very soon, I'll bring you good news from the Prime Minister. Excuse me, Your Majesty. 15 million naira. Ladies, is something wrong? What's going on? We just want you to tell us your impression about us. Well, impression? This is a trick question. I have a common impression about all of you. Okay, if you were asked to choose, who would you choose amongst us? Shut up, Helen. That is not why we're here. You said the prince proposed to marry you, and we see it as an abuse of royal procedures. Princes do not propose to their fiancés in secret. So we want you to tell us why you would engage Helen without telling us anything about it. Um, that's, that's putting me on the spot here. I mean, I, I pay each of you very well to be my mistresses, so there's no question of choices here. But in any case, since um, you're the genesis of this problem, Helen, were you smoking designer weed when your father proposed to you? My prince, yes, you did propose to me the other night. You said I was the best thing that happened to you in your life. <laughs> a lot of best things have happened to me, you know. So you're standing there and you're lying against the prince of the land. Is that it? My prince, you know I'm not lying against you. You said you give me the kind of love that no man has ever given to me. You promised. You know, Helen, you're becoming a problem. Just fully. I see you as the problem I have now. First, you don't want me to be king. And now, you lie against the prince of the land that I proposed to you. All right, here's the solution. So at this point on, you cease to exist in this house. You just expired. Get out. No, no, my prince. My don't prince. touch me. Do not touch me. My prince. Do whatever you can, but don't touch me. My prince, you can't leave me now. I'm so, my mm. prince, I'm sorry. Ladies, will you prince, do me please. the honor of moving the garbage out of the building? Yes, please. please. I beg you. Let go. My heart. Get off. Oh, my love. He said you should get off. Are you there? Ah, oh. Let's go. Let's go. Drag her by a fake weed and get her out of my house. Let my go. I am sorry, mother, but the way you are sounding lay credence to what he is saying. Obialonama is the one that has been groomed for kingship. My father, your husband, exposed him to all the dynamics of leadership of this kingdom. Why are you trying to bring the scot between two brothers? Adora. Mother. If not that you are the head princess of this land, I would have ordered you out of this palace. Why are you questioning me? Mother, I am not questioning you. Rather, Obialonama came to me and complained bitterly that you hate him so much. You even told him point blank that he would never be king. Why would you say a thing like that? There is war waging in this palace. The war between nature and mistake. I have wallowed for so long in that mistake. I now want to be on the side of honor. 
and that is a side of nature. Mother, I don't understand what you mean by that. I want you to always stand anywhere you see me stand. I am your mother and I know more than you. You've not answered the question. Why would you tell Obialonama that he would never be king? You see, Mora will make a better king. Mora was born in a night, beautiful night, when the heaven was full of stars. Unlike Obialonama, who was born in a dark night, when the moon and the stars had taken their leave of the sky. He's going to make a barren king. And you know what? We don't want that kind of king here. Mother, is there something you're not telling me? We are discussing succession here. You need to be wherever your mother is. I am the queen and I know what is good for this land. Do you have any personal problems with Obel Nama? No, 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 no. I don't have any problem with anybody. Then what? Ada, go back to your husband's house. Keep living with him and keep on loving him. Leave the affairs of this land to me. I am the queen. I, I know what is good for this land. If you want to trust me with what is right in this land, right now, there is war between nature and mistake. And I do not allow mistake to win nature. I summoned you here in my capacity as the traditional Prime Minister. Why are you here with strangers? They're not strangers. They're actually my mates. And by extension, new members of the new kingdom, the Umweza kingdom. So they're welcome. I see. I cannot double into nonsense. What I want to discuss with you concerns the very existence of this kingdom. And I cannot say anything while they are looking at me. Let's go. We are waiting in the car. Why do you want them to go away? How am I sure you don't have an ulterior motive here? Huh? That I am disappointed in you is a mere understatement. You are a complete disgrace to royalty. You know, I deeply hope for your own good. You didn't bring me here to insult me. I summoned you to give you elderly advice. That's the whole point. Your prehistoric ideals. I don't need it. You epitomize the real problem of this kingdom. Why should I listen to you? Hmm? Well, you are entitled to your opinion. But tell you what, we all know who the king will be. You are not. So go back and tell your mother to stop parading you as the oncoming king. You are not the crown prince, and you can never be. I have this feeling that Umara is beginning to see us as girls that are permanently available for his exuberance. I don't understand. You don't understand. Yes, I don't understand what you mean. He asked us to accompany him to a function, huh? What did he do? He brought us before his traditional prime minister and introduced us as his maids that are part of the new kingdom. That's unacceptable to me. Firstly, I am not his maid. Secondly, he cannot take me for granted. Well, 
Like you said, old man, well entitled to our opinion. We should call him to order. Do um, you think you can call him to order? Judith, I'm sorry. If he continues like this, I'll be forced to walk out on both of you one of these days. And I mean it. He's gone. I brought you here for a purpose. You didn't bother to know what the purpose was and you walked out. The man introduced himself as the Prime Minister of your kingdom and he said he wanted to be with you alone. So I left because I didn't want to be in this bad book. The only bad book you should have worried about is mine. I run this kingdom. I decide who stays and who leaves. And right now, you're in a bad book. I should do what? Maybe if you don't understand English, you understand it. Get out! Heard all he said. Is there any trait of kingship in him? Father, I am not interested in his lifestyle. No. All I am interested in is in the money she's offering. Father, that woman is offering us 15 million naira. And I think that's the best we can get. All you need to do is just lend her your all important support and we are 15 million naira richer. You see, most time I tend to wonder if my blood runs in your veins. <laughs> Papa, are you trying to tell me I'm not your son? Then talk and behave like one I should bear. A man's integrity is greater than silver and gold. I know. I'm sorry, Father, but this woman is desperate. She's willing to offer cash. Cool cash. Now listen to me. Go back to your queen and tell her what your father said. Tell her that Obelunamma has been confirmed the crown prince and he is to be crowned king. Papa, I don't, I don't, I, look, I want you to understand. I want you to see reasons with me. He wouldn't take anything away from us. All you need to do is just support this woman. We get the money and we go away. Please, father, reconsider. Mother, if we should follow your logic based on the full moon, half moon, then I will tell you that Obelonama is better. The half moon, small moon, or whatever stands for growth and expansion. The full moon stands for completion. It has reached the saturation point, meaning there is nothing new to expect. What exactly are you trying to make out of your stupid and cheap explanation? What? Mother, I am drawing my conclusion based on what you said. Obialanama will make a better king because he has room to grow. He has all the qualities that will lead to expansion. Mora, on the other hand, depicts saturation and stands still. This shows on the level of pomposity which he has a bit. I am sorry, Mother. There is nothing you will ever say that will make me support Mora to be crowned king. Adora, Mother, if I should tell you the truth, I wanted to leave this palace now. You have overstayed your welcome. Get out! Get out! What's happening, royalty? <laughs> Getting it wrong. 
You crazy? Okay? Listen, you don't know where you are. This is where the action is. There. And the power and everything. Now let me explain. This is the Queen of Umwe's land. The Queen Mother herself, Her Majesty. Well, on the other hand, you can choose to ignore acknowledge is the princess of Umwe's land. That's okay. This is, this is the reason we're here. So, um, so courtesy properly do I talk to you. Their Majesties, um, the Queen and Princess of Umezu Kingdom, I kneel in greetings. That's my love child. The Who's she? Child. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, my oh, oh, God. Can you sit on my foot? Oh, yes. you sit Are you here? stupid? Huh? Is there something that's drawing you to that seat? Mom, let, let, let me explain who she is before you get upset. Mom, don't get upset. Um, well, she represents a wide variety of interests in my life, but um, amongst them is. Um, Stuff and mother and so can all this cause, but in, in, in any well, well, to put it in summary, um, I think the app phrases that she, she's my domestic staff. <laughs> Do you see the problem? You see that sneak kissing? You see that python about to leave? That's what the problem is. She looks down on people all the time. Okay, I, I don't do that. I don't do that. I extend a certain courtesy to my staff, take them around. What are you trying to do? Give my mom hard blood pressure. Once you sit on this seat, you can't even join you on this seat. Take her out. Um, out! You heard her, get out. Disappear. You don't exist. You are an exile. You have expired. How much more will I explain? Move the fuck out of here! Thank you. Mom. Big sleeve is gone. Here we a cool car and rope room with Were you a seer? Because. Everything you told me is happening before my very eyes. I called you here to extract vital promises from you. As you're aware, I know the mind is very, very strong. But the head is never as big as the load it carries. A situation might arise in the future. You might come under fire in a bid to betray me or undermine the sovereignty of this kingdom. Promise me here and now that you will never get involved in such despicable act. I will never betray you, Your Majesty. Promise me again that this whole land belongs to us. As a result, you will do nothing that will drag this kingdom down. I'm sorry, Your Majesty. Why are you telling me all this? I am a man of tradition, and I will live to defend this kingdom. Give it to me as a promise that you will not sabotage this kingdom. I promise you, Your Majesty. Is there anything the matter? From your knowledge of our late king, was he a seer? I don't want to discuss the dead. I am here for something very important. I'm listening. The fact that our late king appointed his first son the successor to the throne does not mean that we must do that. We are living today. And we must change. If there is need, I want us to do the right thing. And what you say is the right thing. Good. We have two princes in this land. One was born when the moon was very tender. The other one was born when the moon was full. His birth signifies maturity. And it's only natural that we make him king. I don't get you clear. What do you want from me? All right. Obialanama was born when the moon was very tender. And I think he lacks the threats of a king. Nora was born when the moon was full. That's maturity. He has the threats of a king. And it is right that we make him king. That's all. Are you talking on your own? Or were you sent by people? You know what I was discussing with your sister before you came in? 
I was telling her that you are the best candidate. You are a better candidate than your brother. And she didn't believe me. Why would she believe you? Why in the whole world would anybody support you? The news all over the place is that you are the prince that believes he is safer in the hands of loose girls. I've been trying to defend you. And now you have the cause to invade my presence with a prostitute. Ah, hold up, Mom. I, I think we need to set some records straight here. Now, and my look, sound, you don't dress like a prostitute. But she's not a prostitute, I can tell you that. Uh, should I tell you the truth? No, Mom, you need to trust my judgment. You know what? I don't have time for your nonsense. I'm working hard to make you the king. You should learn how to carry yourself as the next king. And this is from things that will undermine royalty. Ah, Mom. Anne may not be royalty. But I'll tell you something for certain. I can trust her. Now, you need to trust my judgment. All right? I know what I'm doing. I don't think you do. If you know what you are doing, then show it. Mom, I really didn't come to discuss all this. Seriously. This is too heavy for me. What I came here to discuss was the issue you had with Victor when you invited him over. I also came about the contract that you promised me. That's what I'm here for. You know, all this heavy duty situation. Now listen, you are not going to divert my attention with an issue that is not important. There's a war raging in this palace. I'm talking about the war between mistake that was made in a hurry and the forces of nature. You are working on the side of nature. You should learn how to carry yourself as the next king. I have set all the machinery in motion, but the only obstacle I'm going to have may be you. Please, do not constitute yourself an obstacle, please. Yeah, uh, Mom, I, I think you lost me there. What do you mean by um, um, mistakes and, and um, nature? What was that? Go back to your house. Go back to your house and learn how to work with men. That is how leaders do. Eh? And stop giving people the impression that you cannot do without women. I'll go, Mom. Um, what about the contract now? Ichi, I'll see you in the evening. All right. You had all I said. Ponder over them. There are no more spares doom for this kingdom. We cannot crown a man who was born when the moon was not even half his circle. It means dissertation, barrenness, and what have you. The night before my father died, he told me something. I adore my daughter. Okay. I'm very grateful to God for giving you a very good husband. Don't you for any reason abandon your brothers, no matter what. In fact, before you were born, your mother had three girls, but they all died. You are the only girl in the family. And as such, I'd like to plead with you not to tell the line of women who abandon their families and getting married. Instead, stick to that thing you believe in that is just and noble. Don't you ever play to the gallery. Did you hear me? Yes, Father. Don't you ever play to the gallery. If you are confronted with a difficult situation, no matter how difficult, think and ponder if your father had, was in such a situation, how would I react? Yes, Father. Anything that your mind tells you, go ahead and do it. All right? But I am sorry, Father. You are sounding a bit worried. It's everything okay? My daughter, even my enemies know that I'm a great man. I will want to do what will make me happy, even in my grave. 
Father, don't talk like that. I know you will live to see your grandchildren. Please. If our father finds himself in this kind of situation, he will go to the very person who is trying to deny him of his right and entitlements and ask why. I want you to do the same. I've been to our mother countless times to beg her. She wouldn't listen to me. Then go back to her. You can't afford to give up now. Continue to beg her. As long as she's not ready to listen to you. I want you to keep begging her. And beg her until she accepts. Please. <laughs> Did you think I'm stupid? Did you really think you could kill me? <laughs> you think you could fool me? <laughs> this is a revolver. You know what will happen if I shoot you in the head? The bullet will exist that you back of your skull. It's going to make it really big. <laughs> Listen. I have this feeling that Mwara is beginning to see us as girls that are permanently available for his exuberance. I don't understand. You don't understand. Yes, I don't understand what you mean. He asked us to accompany him to a function, huh? What did he do? He brought us before his traditional prime minister and introduced us as his mates and are part of the new kingdom. That's unacceptable to me. Firstly, I am not his maid. Secondly, he cannot take me for granted. We should call him to order. So, you think you can sit in my car and talk trash about me? You didn't know my car was wired, did you? Hmm? Did you? <laughs> now, what do you mean by calling me to order? If you kill me, you are not going to become king in Imwezi. Okay. This is getting rather interesting. Well, who the hell do you think you are to stop me? I am a woman you met by chance. Whatever we have done so far, we are all done by chance. You are going to become king by chance. Let me go and I'll teach you the ideology of chance. Wow. Apparently I was living with a stranger all this time. You teach me the ideology of chance. Do you have any inkling who I am? I'm the Lord Supremo. Anyway, you can walk out of here if you tell me what I want to know. Okay. Start talking. It's it's so unfortunate. You still don't know me. I was trained by professionals. I know the value of life. I would do no nonsense. Getting right interesting. Hello. That busy body that is parading himself as the next king of their kingdom took me to their traditional prime minister. And there in their kingdom, he ordered me out of his car at home point. Go. I want us to forget our differences. We really need to deal with that Nikonpo. So Judith, you want us to forget our differences, right? You see, you guys really dealt with me that day. But it's okay now, I've forgotten about it. Anyway, I have a plan. I don't know about you. Helen, we have to deal with him ruthlessly. Do you still remember what he made us go through? I mean, it's only natural we pay him back 
in his own coin. Do you realize that the prince is in a very deadly confraternity? He's not the kind of man you deal with anyhow. So we, we need a plan. That's why I'm asking you to tell me what you plan is. Then we can work with it. I have an idea. I have a plan. I have a plan. Okay. We'll work together. I'm sorry, Shenebelu. But there is something you have said so far that is close to what I want to hear. I gave you money to buy him to her side. You have not been able to do that. So, why are you here? Calm down, Your Majesty. One thing you will not forget is that we are now partners. <laughs> Mora is going to be the next king. How do you intend to achieve that? Eh? The traditional prime minister who is going to crown the next king is he seeing Abel Nama as the crown prince and heir apparent to the throne? You have not been able to discourage him. So why do you call yourself my partner? Your Majesty, I want you to give me your word that you want more at all costs and by all means possible. Of course I want him to be king at all costs. But by all means, I don't know what you mean by that. <laughs> there is only one way we can make Mwara the king. Let me hear that. Ibiam, once we eliminate Obialanama from the sea, the traditional prime minister will have no choice but Mwara. <laughs> you know what? I am not sure you are a true Ichi of this land. Why are you talking like that? Without controversy, I am an Ichi. If you are one, you should have known that it is impossible, practically impossible, to eliminate Oberonama. No prince of Umwez can be killed. This is an age long tradition. And as an Ichi, you are supposed to have known that. Your Majesty, those who know this historical background, of a tradition. Also know how to change it. You will hear from me soon. <laughs> you will to tell me all that you know. So that we are going to walk out of here alive. Leaders do not intimidate their subjects. I have already surrendered under your protection. Why are you still intimidating me with a gun? Shut up. What do you mean by the ideology of chance? Tell me or you'll die here right now. Chance is one word that many undermine. But it remains the strongest word in the ladder of success. More than 90% of men that succeed in all they do Succeeded by chance. What are you doing? I'm going to kill you here. Don't do anything stupid. Can you call yourself a leader? When you can pull that trigger and, and kill a defenseless woman? I have done you no wrong. Why are you trying to kill a woman that gave you love? Nothing but love. Why? Don't do it. I'm stupid. Hmm? Mother, I'm again down on my knees begging you to tell me what went wrong. Abel Nama, rise, please. Just rise. Get up, please. Mother, it's obvious that you don't want me to be the next kid. I want to know, why do you hate me so much? There's one impression I want to correct here. You are still my son. I've never told anybody that I hate you, and I cannot. So why are you not showing me the love that a mother should show a son. 
My father told me I would be the next king. All the elders have accepted it. Except you. What went wrong? Go to any astrologist you know and verify. A man who was born when the moon was full will surely make better king than the one who was born when the moon was crescent. I'm only concerned with the prosperity of this land. Mora was born when the moon was full and I trust him to make a better king for this land. Our father knew the sizes of the moon when we were both born, but his instructions are completely different from yours. <laughs> Long before he became your father, he was my husband. So, do you think you know him better than I do? But mother, his instructions were clear. My father said he had blessed me with all the blessings of the throne. And indeed he was emphatic that I would be the next king. Even members of the ruling class are aware why are you not giving me the support that I need, Mother? Abelanam, ask me for anything you want, and it will be yours. As for the throne, Mora is the one I know that will bring prosperity to this land, and he's the one I support. Mother, in all the years that I learned the dynamics of leadership under my father, he never ever mentioned once anything about a full half or crescent moon to me. I'm sure it's not part of our people's culture. <laughs> Can you vouch with anything that you know the culture of our people? Can you? Mother, I was taught by the king himself. He believed in me. He did say I have the potential of being a great man. Mother, please. I need your support. I will never disappoint you. Roast it and eat it. Your Highness, we don't eat lizards in Mumuizu. How can you ask me to roast it and eat it? Yes, people of Umezu do not eat lizards. And they do not sell their conscience for a pot of porridge. Or they themselves to be used for something that would destroy the land. It was like a trance. He he came purposely to warn me and I got the message clearly. I am disappointed in that he took the appearance of the king for you to know that men of this kingdom don't sell their conscience. I'm sorry, Father. I'm very sorry. Just that I was deceived by the money she offered. I don't know what they gave to her, really. But I can categorically state that the queen is working with some external forces to destroy this kingdom. And I will be Orion. The traditional prime minister will make them fail. <sighs> Gave me a lizard and asked me to roost and eat. I know what that means. I just thank God I've not collected any money from her. That's all right, my son. That's okay. I was taught by the king himself. He believed in me. He did say I have the potential of being a great man. Mother, please. I need your support. 
I will never disappoint you. It's a mistake I made in the hurry. He cannot wage war against the age. No. Do you know why I called her here? I had have enough of this year, dead girls and the living girl, which is her daughter. I know why she's surviving. It's because she is the last in your count of the four market days we have in Ibo land. Pray to God to make the charge you are carrying a baby boy. Or else, or else. <laughs> My husband. No, no, be on your own. You treat me like I am the one that creates these girls. Children are gifts from heaven and they must come when nature desires. It's my fault that I give birth to girls. I've already made my point. There is no need for the reputation of it. I need a mere child that will play around this palace. That will grow and take over when I'm no longer here. If you ever give birth to a baby girl again, from that hospital to your parents, please don't ever think of coming back to this palace. I have spoken. Should I blame the gods for blessing me with the girls? Oh my God, what am I going to do if I end up giving birth to another girl? My dear. I would advise you to go to Udaromo and pray under that tree. So many women have prayed under that tree and miracle happened. You never can tell where your miracle will come from. So just give it a chance, okay? Okay? If I pray under Udaromo, will the gods bless me with a male child? Will they wipe my tears? Yes. I'm very, very sure. If the gods could bless other women, why would the gods bless you? Your Majesty. His Majesty, my husband has asked me not to return to the palace. If I give birth to another girl child, I am confused right now. That is why I have come to humble myself under your fatal shadow. I beg that you give me a male child. Please give me a male child. That is all my husband desires. If I don't get him a male child, I can't remain in the palace. Please give me a male child. Please give me a male child. Why are you here asking for what you have? Who are you? Okwama, the benevolent goddess of the forest of peace. She is the one that stands before you. I've not come to see you. I've come to Udala Onyuma to give me a male child. And I'm telling you to have a child, a male child, when the time comes. Are you saying this pregnancy is a male child? Do not rush yourself into confusion. You will have a male child when the time comes. Men can manipulate nature. But I tell you the truth, men surely cannot cheat nature. No, what I want is a male child. That's, that's all I desire to have. <laughs> you will have a male child when the time comes. Do not rush yourself into confusion. Confusion can only bring you frustration. You can avoid it. I was kneeling under the fatal shadow of Udala Onyowa when Okwama, the benevolent goddess of the forest of peace, appeared. I want to be very sincere with you. I don't have any business with Okwama. I need a male child. She said at the right time we are going to have a male child. 
my husband, you are the king of this land. And you should be able to listen to the voice and the voices of the gods. I need a my child that I could bless with all the blessings from the throne. All the gods and goddesses believe now that I need a my child. Give me a my child or I threw you out of the palace. She said I should not rush myself into confusion. I need some peace around there. Don't say a word to me. And whenever you come back to this palace, if you give birth to the fifth girl, you can take her to any place you like. What I need is a son that has broken. Congratulations, Your Majesty. You just delivered a bouncing baby girl. I need a mad child that will play around this palace, that will grow and take over when I'm no longer here. If you ever give birth to a baby girl again, from that hospital to your parents, please don't ever think of coming back to this palace. I have spoken. Nurse. Why did you keep me waiting? I'm sorry. What do you want? Money. Just money. How much do you want? 10,000 naira. But I have given you 20,000 naira already. How come you're asking for more 10,000 naira? What you paid me so far was not enough compared to what I've done for you. I went against the ethics of my profession to exchange your female child for a male child. You shouldn't be angry that I'm asking you for more money now. I hope you have not told anyone about this. I'm a professional. I don't even keep friends. I'll keep it for you. Very well then. I shall bring the money to your house later this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Your Majesty. Thank you. Just to satisfy my husband, I stole another woman's child and killed him now that facilitated the crime. I took up my position in the palace as the queen mother to the crown king. In less than two years, I became pregnant again. Doctor, how is my baby boy? He's okay. I made a mistake to have stolen the child. I should have listened to Okwaman, the goddess of the forest of peace. I rushed into my own confusion. Now the child has stole from the hospital. He's going to rule over my own son. Impossible. Obelonama is an intruder. He will never be king of Umweze. Yes, Opadike, what is it? Your Majesty, there is a lady at the gate. She says she's from Umuatu, and her name is Obelonama. She demands to see the queen. A strange lady at the gate from Umuatu says her name is Obelonama, and you didn't dismiss her from the gate. 
I'm sorry, Your Majesty. You go get her. Thank you, Your Majesty. Are you saying you just came into this palace to tell me your dreams? Did anyone tell you I'm an interpreter of dreams? Before my birth, my father warned my mother not to return with a girl child. I was told when she finally returned with me, the house was made too hot for her. Eventually, my father died. How is that my business? I'm not from Omato and I don't have any business there. My mother is Madame Alice of Umuatu. She asked me to come and see you. She said you will recognize me. Why would she ask you to come and see me? Look, I don't know you. Or have we met anywhere before? Okay. How many are you in your family? My mother gave birth to four children, four girls before me. They all died before their first birthday. You remain the only elder that I trust. And that is why I've come to you. My mother has made it clear that she doesn't want me to be the kid. Can I relinquish the kinship to my brother? The answer is instant no. You see, before your father died, he warned that some forces will emerge trying to destroy this kingdom. From the ongoing, your mother seems to be at the center of those forces. We cannot afford to allow her succeed and undermine the king. But I've been to her several times asking her where did I go wrong. She's giving me no tangible reason. Do I tell you the truth? I no longer bother over how the, the Queen feels about this matter. In a month from now, we will crown you king. Your mother is bringing in politics into this. And I will teach her that politics cannot be mixed with culture. Are you asking me to just ignore her? Exactly. Ignore her and ponder over what you heard from your father. I knew what your father told me in private, and I am not prepared to undermine him. the other going to
energy God is the giver of all authority No use in fighting, no point in killing Oh no, God chooses the king I am a synergy God is the giver of all authority No use in fighting You made to tell me that he's still alive? We made use of the best weapons that were meant to tear him into shreds. That's what I want, tear him into shreds. Eh? But I'm sorry, Ichie, it didn't work out that way. The bullets didn't penetrate him. I mean, we emptied all our magazines on him and yet he was still looking at us, smiling at us. Then you rush him and strangle him to death. That's what I wanted. I told you I want him dead. Eh? If the bullets didn't penetrate, why didn't you look for another means to end his life? I paid you for this job. Each year, you can go and ask those who recommended us to you. They will tell you that we'll kill with guns. As far as I, Onion Tom, am concerned, we have killed that young man. That he refused to die is something I cannot explain. I even attempted using sand, and yet the gun refused to let off. Each year. If you are now telling me that we need anything other than the guns to kill him, then you have to figure out how to do that yourself. Hmm. Oyento, come back here. Come back here, Oyento. What are you trying to do? You're working out on me? Huh? Don't huh? push me, Ichi. Are you listening to me? I said don't push me. Or I'll be forced to do what you would do. Blessings. The queen says she does not want him. He must be shown the way out. Madame Alice of Umato sent her daughter to come and tell me her stories. Why? Alice of Omato. Is she the mother of this boy? What do you want from me? When you come to Dalon, you were to ask for a male child. I told you something. Men can manipulate nature, but men surely cannot cheat nature. I advise you not to rush yourself into confusion. But you ignored me completely. You went ahead and ran faster than your God. Now tell me, are you not facing the confusion now? I apologize for not listening to you when it matters most. My husband ordered me not to come home with a girl child. I was only trying to save my marriage. The woman of Umato prayed for a male child and her God answered her and gave her a male child. You went and stole that male child from her and that has made you a thief. Do you still have the right to parade yourself as a queen in this land? I have never defied any of the deities of Umato. Why are you trying to open up my past now? You connive with the corrupt and greedy us to steal another woman's male child when I've already told you that your own male child will come to you. Now tell me, where is that nurse? Your parts are filled with death and your hands are dripping with blood. A thief and a murderer has no part in the administration of this land. You must go to the traditional prime minister and confess your sins. That is the way, and that is the only way. Please, come and wait. I 
I've come to learn that mortals are safer in the hands of deities. I choose to hide under your protection. I don't want to go to the traditional prime minister for this matter, please. I beg you. He remains the only one you must see. Time is of the essence. It has become very imperative. People are beginning to see us as people that are not united. Please, my brothers, we must correct that impression before it gains ground. We must text ourselves to send the right signals to people. We are royalties, and we must show people that we are united. What is going on? Must you do this all the time? Doing what? Seriously. I mean... Are you not married to a wealthy man? I thought your duty, first of all, is underneath that man on the bed every night. In ecstasy. So what are you doing ordering grown men with tools between their legs around? And you look at me, you have no right, no right to speak to Adora that way. Oh, please, I'll stop with you. In Umuizu, women are generally considered second-hand citizens, in case you don't know. So I'm wondering what I'm doing, a bona fide man with a tool between my leg, listening to you as if you were my leader. That's what she is. That's exactly what she is. She's our leader, you don't talk to her like that. She is your leader, you spineless piece of shit. She is not my leader. I am a prince of Umwezi. I am royalty. And in this land, there's no woman born of a man that can tell me what to do. Mora, why are you like this? Don't you realize I'm your elder sister? <laughs> Must you insult people? You know what? You have a point there. I really have done a loss what I'm doing here. Both of you obviously understand each other. You're obviously on the same page, so let me give you a moment. Now you have no right to walk out on the Princess of Umwes. You want to do that to me, you can do it. Not her! I was going to stop you. You? Are you man enough? What? Because the truth of the matter is that I am going to walk out. What are we doing here? We're sitting and listening to a woman that called a meeting between two men. I have blue blood in my veins. I am the face of royalty. I need to remain know. like that. Is that what you think? Look, Father begged me never to leave this family. And I promise him that I will always stand by both of you. You know you can force me to leave. Well, and you know that. You know what you don't understand is that. This is the dawn of a new dispensation. Mm -hmm. Father is dead. You understand? So you can't sit here and try to order men around. Your place and your place will always be underneath your husband to service him as he pleases. And not between men. Is that what you think? That's what I know. You are lost. This is crazy. 
gouvernement. This is crazy. Sit down. I can't take this. I'm beginning to think he's the one to send the assassins after me. No. I disagree. You don't need to disturb yourself over nothing. He's not the one that will say who actually is the true face of royalty. The case men of Umezu are the ultimate jury. And they shall come up with their judgment in three weeks. About the assassins, I disagree. Mora is full of exuberance. I tell you he can never send assassins against his own brother. Do one thing for me. Just calm down. Let things flow the way it's supposed to be. I wish to express my gratitude for the high class hospitality you gave me. This one you are fully dressed. Don't tell me you are going back to Umatu. Yes, Your Majesty. I'm going back to Umatu. I do not want to overstay my welcome. I tell you the truth. You can never overstay your welcome here. In fact, you need to give me some of your time because I need to discuss further with you. Your wish is my command, Your Majesty. Your Majesty, is there anything you would like me to do for you? If I need you, I'll send for you. For now, you may leave. It's okay, Your Majesty. Come. Hope you slept well. There was this satisfaction and fulfillment that descended on me when you asked me to. Spend the night here. I slept peacefully for the first time, like a baby. of anywhere, but an Ije of Umwezu Kingdom. I am not going to eat kola not broken by a woman. Elsewhere, women may go berserk and break kola not. It remains a taboo here in Umwezu. A woman to break kola not. Please wait. That every man has a price is not a perfect saying. There are men who would prefer to die rather than betray themselves. Such men could not be bought over. But men like you, who can be bought over by women, cannot raise their heads when real men are talking. Do what you must do, or you face what is deadlier. Your Majesty, is anything the matter? A lot of things are clicking already. I just want to be sure. Tell me, when exactly is your birthday? 19th October. Oh, you have the same birthday with my son. And you bear the same name. I don't understand this development. My name is not Obialunama. 
I adopted the name when the guards asked me. I was taken unaware, so I simply said Obialunama. So what's your real name? My name is Chinasa. Surely I don't understand what is going on. How do you mean, Your Majesty? Does the name remind you of anything? Mm, forget the fact that today they call me Her Majesty the Nora of Women. My real name before I got married is Chinasa. In fact, you are not going back to Mato. I actually believe you belong here. Your Majesty, please. I came here with the clothes I'm wearing. I cannot remain here for too long. Don't worry. The clothes you wear will not be a problem. You have enough before the end of today. Ever before you got married into this palace, I was already a great man in Umwes. You can't destroy me. You cannot. This is Ichi Enebelu. He's a great man in Umwezu. You can go to the room now. I want to be alone with him. Hmm? Yes, Your Majesty. What has come over you? What is the matter with you? Huh? You couldn't even control your outburst. How can you start shouting in the presence of a girl you never met before? And what's my business with who she is? Nonsense. Look, I've already paid some money to Onyento, the deadliest assassin around here. Yet, they could not kill him. I'm already at a loss. Take. That's exactly what you paid to me. I was never, ever a part of this. Look for another person to continue from where I stopped. And what is the meaning of this? You are blocking my way. Why? A stranger is coming to rule you. I need a man like you to stop him. What do you mean by a stranger is coming to rule over us? Sit down. Sit down, Jennifer. Let me tell you why you cannot back up now. Sit down. My prince. There is rumor in town that um, you were attacked by assassins. I just came by to know what really happened. Indeed. There were assassins, and there was an attempt on my life. But the most important thing, my friend, is I am still alive. Now, my prince, I know you are still alive. But have you done anything to find out who really, re really planned this, this crime? I have decided to put it all behind me, put it in the past. So, my friend, what plans do you have put in place for the coronation? My prince, I'll you see him. Bring him in. Ah, my prince, I come to have a private dispatch with you. Can you go? Oh, my prince, I'm already on my way out. Thank you. Alaji. What can I offer you? Oh, well, I, you offer me many things, but you wait until we finish the discussion. The fact is, I'm not getting you. If you want me to understand you, relax and talk like a man with authority in this kingdom. If you crown Obelanama, Igor of Umwezu, you'll be making the greatest mistake ever made in the history of this kingdom. You are still talking as a biased DJ. Obelunama is the crown prince. 
What is this deadly mistake you are talking about? Kankuwa kena kwe bon suba. Abaraya. Kankuwa lwa kwe bon suba. Obelonama is a man of Umatu. If you call him king, then it means we are being ruled by a stranger. Don't you think you are becoming careless with words? How can our crown prince be a man from Umuatu? There is this saying in Umuatu that only the woman can say who is the father of her child. Are you suspecting that the queen of Umuatu opened herself to a man of Umuatu? Be very careful of what you say. I never said that. And the queen never opened herself to any man of Umuatu. But she actually stole the child. Beg your pardon? Igwe Kulukaralo ordered the queen to produce a male child or be thrown out of the palace. She nurtured the pregnancy and even went to Dalo Nyowa to pray for a male child. She entered the labor room and came out with a girl child. There in the hospital, she connived with a nurse and they stole the son of an unconscious woman. Her name is Madame Alice of Omoatu. As we speak now, that girl that she was delivered of, that was exchanged for the boy, is living in the palace now. Now tell me, Obore, do you have any right to crown a stranger king of Omoatu? Can you swear? on your life that the queen told you all this? She did. I am actually under oath not to discuss this with anybody. But you are the traditional prime minister and you know what is going on. She stole a child and presented as a prince. I'm telling you what I just found out. She has been trying to prevent our kingdom from being ruled by a total stranger. That's why she has been clamoring for Mora, her biological son, and a complete man of Umwezu. This is complicating. Here, strangers are not made kings. You and I can stop it. I want us to stop it. Elijah, I'm sorry, but you have not been able to say anything meaningful. You've just been going round and round, and sincerely, I am confused. Irime, I know by the decision they make. You see, there are plenty, plenty conspiracy against you that you need to be strong to survive it. Can you come out clearly and tell me those who are involved with this conspiracy? You see, men will force you to suffer for what you don't know about. Don't look at them. Always abide by what your father told you that you remember. Kajigo? Alaji, please have a seat. No, don't worry. Don't worry. There are plenty, plenty of people waiting for me. So I have to go and see them. Eh? Kajigo? You are the person that just confirmed that strangers don't rule. Why won't you follow me to the palace? We need to confront the queen. I can't go to a woman. She has to come to me. I agree with you. That's under an ideal situation. What we have here is not ideal. Let us suspend protocols and stop a stranger from ruling. I will not suspend protocol. Neither will I undermine my authority in the kingdom. I can't confront a woman. Go and tell her to come to me. I don't understand the look on your face. I want you to go to the traditional prime minister and tell him what happened. He still remains the only competent authority that will handle this matter. Never. Ichi, I will not go to Obarangi for anything. I will not. Why? He has been opposing the choice of Mwara. 
I believe that if you should confess this abominable act before him, he will act on it and have a change of heart. What do you call abomination? Your Majesty, a child from Umat was presented to our king as a prince. And he was blessed and bestowed with all the blessings from the throne. That same child has grown to become a crown prince for years. That's abomination. Wait a minute. Is it Abba Ryan that is calling it abomination or are you the one saying it? Your Majesty, you are sounding as though you don't understand the gravity of the offense you committed. Ichi, are you working for me or against me? Your Majesty, I'm neither working for nor against you. As an Ichi, I am doing what I know is right for the kingdom. I want you to go and confess to the Prime Minister. Never! Never! I will never go to confess to anybody. If those of you who parade yourselves as men of the ruling class will not do the right thing, I will force you to read. Oh, but remember, it's a mistake I made because I refused to listen to the spirit that came to talk to me. More like my biological child. There's a war between nature and mistake. And you people of the ruling class must make sure that nature wins. Your Majesty, how many of these men of the ruling class are aware of what you are talking now? Eh? You are the person that put us in this mess. And you must stand up to clean this mess. Go and confess. Now leave my presence. Go and confess. Leave my presence. Nobody orders the Queen of Umezu. Leave. You're welcome to the family. Thank you. So good to know that I have a sister. You're so different. Mm -hmm. Different from Adora. Mm -hmm. I'm going to place you in charge of the diamond mine as soon as I assume my original position as king. Hmm? You're going to assume the position of Bellona Mines for quitting. He will relinquish to you. I'll see to it. Hmm? Exactly. He doesn't belong here. He's the son of Madame Alice of Umato. You were able to trace your mother. Let him go and trace who his mother is. You have only one brother. His name is Wara. He's the one here. And he remains your only brother. Your Majesty. I'm sorry to interrupt you. There is violent vibration on Kingston. What? Vibration on Kingston? Go. This is yours. You know, I just feel they are punishing me for a crime I didn't commit. Um, and the unfortunate thing is, I cannot even go back to Umatu because I know nobody there. My prince, why in the world would you think of going back to Umatu? The Igwe was a good man and he declared you the crown prince of Umatu. My prince, if no one sees you as the crown prince, I'll always see you as my crown prince. Maybe you should just go back to London and forget all of this. Just put it behind me. That is not a good option, my prince. If the people of Umuezu denounce you, the land has not denounced you. And that is why we can still thrive on this land. My prince, I still see you as a face of reality. Wangiri, the only knowledge you have to our customs and tradition is that I am your father. I challenge the decision of the council. Father, I am challenging the decision of the council because I believe the council is about to make a grave mistake. I mean, the woman that stole the child has not been punished. So why punish an innocent boy who has proven to have great plans for this community? 
Metal and water. Who shut up your mouth? Why are you holding brief for a stranger? Ichi Enebele. He is no longer a stranger. This is a man that has been exposed to the greatest secrets of this land. This is a man that has been initiated into the Obulo Fen cult. The highest masquerade cult we have in Umuizu. This is a man that is immune to death. He is now one of us and I want us to begin to see him as such. Calling him a stranger is defeatist. Now listen to me. We are no cowards and we can never be. He can continue to live as a man in Umuizu. He can never become a king. Papa, Ichi Enabel, are you going to defy the orders of the late king by crowning someone he has not anointed? That will trigger a lot of setback in this community. You are talking like a child. The king wouldn't have blessed him if he knew he was stolen. That blessing was in error. And we cannot continue in error. He can never be a king in this land. Bam! I came to assure you that I will forever regard you as my brother. I am surprised you are beginning to exclude yourself already. Why? I am not excluding myself. But everybody is excluding me. Almost everybody is. And I don't see why I should continue to parade myself as a man of this land. I'm sorry, Adara. I'm thinking about going to my mother. My heart is no longer here. How could you say a thing like that? Does it mean you're not coming for the coronation? I don't know. I don't think so. I've already relinquished the power to my brother. He is their choice. And I don't see why I should continue to fight for it. Mother, the queen, has already told me where I'm from. Now I know who my real mother is. Now I understand why the queen hates me so much. But I leave posterity to judge. Obi Alunama, please. I beg you. Don't make me lose faith in you. I beg you, in the name of God. I want to see you there. Just promise me you will be there. Promise me. Prime Minister, I hereby call on Her Majesty to bless the incoming king. Your Majesty. Oh, my Majesty. No. Who was the No. And that's of who was the queen? No. I greet you all. I have played my role as the Queen Mother to this kingdom. And today, as I fulfill my duty as mother to this kingdom, I stand before you to bless Mwara, my son. Step forward, please. I stand before you to bless him. I bless him because I know he's the one who is capable of taking this kingdom to greater heights and fulfillment. I greet you.
The time has come for you to step into your father's shoes. It was a rigorous process. And that is to show that nothing good comes easy. Yes. 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 You can step forward now. The crowd refused to enter his head. Well, make it enter. Since you don't know how to do it right, let me show you. Mother. Let us do what we have gathered here to do today. Being the queen mother, I'm only concerned about crowning my son the king. You, old man, I command you take this crown and put it on my head. It is my birthright to be king. You pick the crown and crown yourself. I cannot be king unto myself. It is your duty. I cannot crown you. You are not the king. That which is yours is truly yours. We will not punish you for a crime you did not commit. In my capacity as the traditional Prime Minister of Umwe's Kingdom, I hereby crown you King of Umwe. I hereby pronounce you King of Umwe. Mora's mother was the last visitor I had yesterday. She also came to my place. And she was shouting all through. That's why I asked her to come and see you. Why should you ask her to come and see me over a problem that you could solve? Is there anything of the tradition of this kingdom that you don't know? A woman who had the effrontery of touching the crown of Umwezu she will be bad from women fellowship. Why didn't you tell her this? You are speaking as if you don't know what the king is planning. What is the king planning? One Guinea, your son, is at the center of this unpopular plan. I think you should ask him. I will not ask a young man to tell me what an Ije can tell me. What is the king planning? As we speak now, the king has brought his mother into the palace. Is there anything wrong in a king bringing his mother into the palace? Don't forget that she is his biological mother. And since destiny has brought both of them together, there's nothing wrong if he wants her around him permanently. 
The fact that the king brought his mother into the palace is not a problem. The problem is that he wants to impose her on us as the queen mother of Umwezu. You are joking, aren't you? How can I be joking with such a sensitive matter? I'm telling you what the king is planning with the other young men. Your son inclusive. I don't know how our dethroned queen mother got to know about it and has not ever been comfortable since. A man of Umuatu is now our king. A woman of Umuatu wants to become the queen mother. That's it's impossible. That's why I asked her to come here. In as much as we know that our dethroned queen mother seems evil and overambitious, we cannot take it away from her that she loves this kingdom. I prefer we pardon her and restore her back to her former position as a queen mother instead of crowning a total stranger. All she did is in the interest of the kingdom. This is complicated. But why must Obelunamma ever think of such? I am in a mess I find myself today because I want you to be relevant in this kingdom. I have always wanted the best for you. But you have to rise up and show me that we are working together. Mom, you just drove the nail home now. That's the language. Of course we're working together. I, at least I think so. Adara doesn't believe me. Jesus doesn't believe me either. In fact, nobody believes me. I want you to believe in me. Oh, but Mommy, I believe in you 200%. So what was the problem? I don't know how tight your schedule is, but we're going to Omar today. Mom, that was a problem. And I'm asking you why? Mom, I have other plans now. I have things to do. You don't even bother to find out what you're going to do in Umatu. Eh? You don't have to say no until you find out our mission. Okay, Mom. What is the mission? Uh -huh. Madam Alice, that cursed woman, she's planning with us to come and assume the position of a queen mother here. We must go and stop her before she achieves her aim. Who told you this? Have you even bothered to ask why she was in this palace for two weeks? Two solid weeks. She was actually here, planning with her son to take over this palace. I am your mother. I, you know, you should realize that ego counts. I will not have any strange woman come into this place. And overshadow me. That's not possible. Oh, Mom, this is serious. The sheer audacity of it. You know, to think Obel Nama is going to bring his mother here, a strange woman, to be queen of this land. That's crazy. Yeah, that is why you should think. We are going to Omato. You have to go to your house and prepare. We are going to Omato today. Whatever you say, Mom. Mother, I still do not understand why you don't want to go and live with me in the Muizu kingdom. I would be a better peer with you around, with you by my side. My son, I am always around. I want to remain here in Umato kingdom and recover every single thing that is seized from me. I allow them to trample upon me because I thought there was no need fighting for land. I thought heaven had abandoned me. I thought I had no son. But now that I know that I have a son, my dear, I have to stay back and recover every single parcel of land that they took from me. Mother, I don't need you to go squabbling over a parcel of land or parcels of land. I am king now. I can afford to buy whatever you need. Don't worry. I know what I am doing. Ah. Nora. 
Narof Waste Village triggered all, all the frustrations that I'm facing today. That woman committed a huge abomination against me. Now you're asking me, you're asking me to forgive her, to forgive her of all the evil that she did against me? Yes, mother. Mother, I'm asking you to forgive her because now we know why she did what she did. See it as an act of God. And I am kin. And not just an ordinary kin. A great kin. A kin of Umwezu kingdom. A great kingdom. Oh. That wouldn't have been possible if she didn't steal me, mother. Ha! Huh. That woman almost made me believe that there were no prophecies. Or that prophecies were false. It was prophesied to me that I was going to give birth to a son that would turn out to be a great man. But that is what I am now, mother. That is what happened. I am kin. Mother, please. Let's forget about the past and articulate the way forward. Please. There's a plan by the king to small goal in a woman from Umuatu and make her the queen mother of this land. I understand you are at the center stage of this plan. Is that true? I'm sorry, Father, but I don't understand what you're talking about. Are you saying that you don't know the king has brought in his mother into this kingdom. His mother came into this kingdom by royal invitation, but I can tell you that she has gone back to Umatu. He brought her in to take care of her, so there's nothing like trying to make her the queen. I'm not even at home with the mere fact that she came here. Why? Even if the king wants to make her the queen, why on earth would we kick against it? Why are you forcing me to place a curse on you? Can't you use your head? Why must you support a plan to make Umuazu inferior to Umuatu? A man from Umuatu is our king. A woman from Umuatu wants to be the head of our women. Why? Papa, it's still the king's prerogative. It is still in his place to decide who becomes the queen. And if he has settled for his mother, we cannot continue to call her an outsider. Moreover, her son is the king and he has not done badly. Listen to me. A stranger cannot be queen in Umwezu. So go back to your colleagues, including the king, and tell them this madness must stop. Tell the king that his mother cannot be queen in Umwezu. Papa, don't you think you are trying to usurp the powers of the king? I am the traditional Prime Minister of this Kingdom and I have the powers to check evil. Your call was extremely urgent. Why did you send for me? Abdelunamma is now a time bomb that is about to explode. The other day you promised me that you will come back to me but I have waited for three good days without hearing a word from you. Are you telling me that you are not bothered? I can't remember promising anything. The issue, however, is that I don't clearly understand what you meant by Obialunamma being a time bomb. If you don't know, he is now inquiring into his father's property. I am not going in into any form of argument with you people. Before my husband died, he warned me to stay away from land disputes. Since you said the family has decided to take the land, they can have it all. I have no objection to that. Are you sure we have your full consent? But you said the family has decided to take the land now. And they can go ahead and have the land. I cannot stand against the family's decision. My only offense is that I don't have a son. And my little daughter has no inheritance in it. So they can just go ahead and have it. I have no problem. Good. Um, in line with what you've just said, um, 
We would appreciate it if you could please sign this document. My oral submission is enough. I am not signing any documents. Why? You just said that you wouldn't want to oppose the family's decision. That is what I said and I stand by it. And then sign these papers. Because we are not going to do anything without you endorsing these papers. I am sorry. I am not signing any documents or documents. I don't have any interest in the land. People should just go ahead and have the land. I have said it and my word remains my bond. Alice, you are going to sign these papers. Just prepare your mind. We are not done with this issue. You can go. Thank you. I pleaded with you that we should kill this woman. But you refused. Are we not suffering the consequences now? Had it been we killed her, it would have been an act of killing someone for nothing. She had already given birth to the boy before you called for her assassination. So if I'm allowed to speak, Obianama is not a threat at all. Why are you sounding this way? Okay, can you afford to surrender your own share of the land we seized from his mother? And what makes you think he is interested in the land? Good. The secretary of the town union came to me. Obialunama sent a letter to his office telling him that we seized his father's property from his mother. What happened was that Alice sat him down and told him everything. That is why I will always continue to blame you. Had it been we killed the woman, she wouldn't have had the time of telling anybody anything. Dead people don't talk. You've not told me why you're here. I'm here to make permanent peace with you. I'm here because of your son. That's right. We're here to offer you something. That's right. So you leave this kingdom for good. Hmm? <laughs> what is this? Or what makes you think you can kill me with a gun? What are you waiting for? Blow her bloody brains off. Let me see how she can come here and become a queen mother in our land. With pleasure, mama. Blow it off. Mommy. Come on. Blow it, Wara. Blow it. My brain is jammed. Wara, the gun, the gun is jammed. Huh? I saw mom. What do you want? You stole my son and I have forgiven you. Why are you after my life? Now get out of my house. Out! Mommy, get up now. Rubbish. What effrontery? Come on now. The purpose for going there was to finish this woman and end up her, her ambition of becoming a queen. Where are you going to do this? Eh? We went there for the purpose of killing that woman. What did you waste time? Eh? She have just finished her. And end up on this plan of her planning to become the first queen in the strange land. She has confirmed it. The woman is evil. So she have just finished her. You were there. You saw me make my move. Something inexplicable went wrong. Okay? So I don't understand what you mean by I was wasting time. You wasted time. Why didn't you finish her the moment we came in and met her alone? Eh? That now gave her the time to, 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 to build up the fence against us. All the things we have planned, everything just went like that. Huh? Mom, let me, let me ask you a question. Have you ever killed anyone in your life before? Question, well, it's a relevant question. If you've killed before, you understand what it means to pull a trigger or to take life. But you haven't. You're not a killer. I am a born killer. You know how many men's life I've taken before? Why did you waste this one? Eh? Somebody's insulting your mother. You don't know that the thing you will do is just to kill her and finish her. Don't stop saying that. I am known for it. I'm all about action. But something definitely went wrong. So let's just stop bickering. We're home now. What we need to do is just 
we strategize. I don't understand what you're saying. You give me the wrong impression here. And by the extension, same wrong impression to outsiders. Why are you acting like a stranger? Sounding like you're not part of the politics of the land. Baby, all I want is peace. I want you to be okay. I'm not interested in the politics of this land. But I just want everything to go well. I just spoke to your brother the other day. No, 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 no. Let's, let's, be, on the, no, no. let's, get, let's be on the same page here. Yeah. It's a while we're on the course of a civil conversation. I need you to understand that stranger from Umatu is not my brother. He never will be. Yeah, baby. I understand. You need to understand me too. I need you. To, you don't have to work yourself up like this. This person in question is ready to lay down his life for this kingdom. All he wants to achieve is just to make this kingdom the best kingdom around. You have to understand this. Okay. Do you know? Because I know you don't. So let me put you in the know. Do you know that he plans to make his mother another stranger from Umatu, the queen mother of the land, thereby unseating my mother? Baby, our primary concern. Is is the unity of the palace and the prosperity of the kingdom. Baby, that is what the king wants to achieve. We we'll have to help him, we we'll have to back him up. Shut up! We we'll have to work with I said, Please. I said, shut up. Do you realize who I am? I am your husband for crying out loud. Baby, you're my husband. And my husband, will you ever remain? Okay, why when it comes to jail, why are you not seeing things that I'm seeing? Obelonama doesn't wish us well. This man is planning to extend our kingdom to Umatu. And you're here telling me rubbish. That's not true. Obialolama has no such plan. Oh, okay, for real? Maybe you have to understand. So, I'm a liar. Okay, I understand. I understand what it is. You see, I understand that you and I cannot be on a parallel concerning this matter. I, I think what we need to do is to get you inside. No, no, no. Go inside, relax. And then I'll make plans to get you back to Canada. No, 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 baby. I'm not going anywhere. You trust me, you can't no, handle no, 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 the politics no, 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 no. of the I'm not going to Canada. You, go you have to understand I'm not going anywhere. I just, I just want you to be okay. Why are you giving me the impression that you value her more than me? I value both of you. You are my mother. But she's the one who nurtured me. She even directed me on how to get to you. Mom, she has done so much for me. I, I can't cure her. Are you not the one that told me that she prevented you from getting married? Why are you trying to defend a woman you already called a witch? Mom, I didn't call her a witch. And I can't call her because she is not one. I know she has her own problems, but she is still a good woman. You will not like what I will do to you if you refuse to work with me. I am making every plan to get a husband for you. That is the greatest honor a woman can have. I am your mother. That is why I'm making every effort to honor you. You must learn to walk with me. This discussion is strictly between both of us. If I ever hear you let it out to anyone, I will simply kill you. Why is the mother forcing me to do what I know I can't do? I kill a woman who gave me life. <clears throat> Your Majesty, we have come to solicit for Nora's reinstatement to her former position. Laws are meant for man and not man for the law. I would be very happy, very pleased to reinstate my mother as the queen mother of this kingdom. 
But I need to know what should be done. Your Majesty, I think what we did in this case is a mere declaration from you because you are the king. Oh no. Your Highness. You are in a very honored position. And I need to know from you what should we do that will still be in line with the tradition of our people? Your Highness, declaration is not enough. For sure, you will bring out the staff of Umar's. Then declare the queen forgiven. After which, you strike the staff three times on the ground. That is the only way she will be reinstated. Has such abominable act ever happened in this kingdom? And if yes, how was it resolved? Mm, well, it, I, I, I think it's uh, well. Yes, something. <clears throat> Your Majesty. Oh no. Are we sure that the king will not die if the staff of Umuiz is brought out for an individual? Because my father told me that the staff of Umuiz can only be brought out in a case involving the entire community. What elders? Exactly. You said you would attend the meeting. So, why didn't you go again? I didn't feel like it. It's still a problem. You didn't feel like when they were discussing a way forward for the kingdom? That's not fair. Chinasu, this is bigger than fairness. Do you understand? What is the true picture of things? The youth of this land connived and aligned all their loyalty to Obialonama. And you expect me to sit down with them and discuss what? No. Our line low. We strategize, you know, like put things together. And then when I bounce back, you understand. War is imminent. And believe me, I will not be the loser. Are you the one who is going to start the war? Because Obialunama is not thinking of war. I hate to say, but mother's right. How do you mean? She said you will not walk on our side. I think you've moved to the other side of the divide. You've aligned your loyalty to a man who bears absolutely no biological relationship with you. Biological relationship is not the only relationship that we have. I have seen blood brothers and sisters killing each other. I value true love, and that is what Obial Nama represents. I don't know, but I cannot just do anything to undermine his peace initiatives. And in essence, mother is right. You do work for him. I am working for the progress of the family, and not just one individual. Opialumama is now king, and he is doing extremely well. So you do not have a choice but support him. Get out of my house. Are you talking to me? And if you ever get into troubled waters, don't you ever call my name. You were sending me out of your house because I told you the truth. The truth is relative. The truth, as I understand it, is that you've aligned your loyalty, attached yourself emotionally to a man who bears absolutely no blood or biological relationship with you. That is the truth. And you have it, the solution at the moment. Because you don't even know what the truth means. So get out of my house now. 
I have this weird feeling that some of the elders have been bought and this has given me a reason to worry. I think they are planning my downfall. Your Highness, I must be sincere with you. I don't think any of the elders has been bought. What they are doing boils down to ego and I think we should give them some credit. I would want to believe you. I do believe you to an extent. But I have my doubts because of what happened today. I learned that if I stamp the staff of Umwezu in order to reinstate my mother, I would die. Yeah, <clears throat> the truth is, the dethroned queen told them that you were planning to bring your mother and make her the queen mother, and they believed her. I have no such plans. I simply want my mother to come live here with me because I've been separated from her since birth. I want to ask you this question. And um, what if we declare your, your wife the new queen mother? I believe Inora would have a problem with that. No, I cannot involve my wife in the politics of this kingdom. If you'd listen to me, I'd like us to let this matter lie. Already I've told my father you have no such plans of bringing your mother to make her the queen mother. So I think you should concern yourself with the development of the land and how to secure grassroots support. No one can stop a popular king. The queen wants me to kill my mother. And I know she must be stopped. <laughs> you don't need to bother yourself over that. The Mem Alice I saw the other day is not the kind of woman mother can intimidate. This has gone beyond mere desire to intimidate. She's all out to kill. Do you know the other day, mother asked me to poison her. And I said I can't do such a thing. Seriously, she's really, really angry with me. I am not surprised. She doesn't treat me like a daughter either. All because she's been telling me things that are against my conscience, which I refuse to do. Our mother defined me as a weak woman. Our mother's definition of strength is wickedness and inconsiderations. I tell you, if you hope to be relevant, do not do whatever mother asks of you. I'm very confused. Chinasa, you don't have to be confused. Just do that what is right. Come and see me off. So many people you meet every day. Some will try to lead you astray. They will cause you pain and take away your joy. But your destiny. No one can cover the moon, no one can stop the sun from shining What will be will surely be, no one can stop your destiny No one can cover the moon, no one can stop the sun from shining What will be will surely be, no one can stop your destiny Mom, when did you come back? Death is nearer than life. A woman can kill countless men in just one day. But it takes nine months to produce a child. Now tell me, do you know why people fear death? I'm sorry, Mom. But I sincerely do not understand you. A woman who gave birth to you has given you life. She's your God and everything. I am your mother and I am your God. If you're not careful, I am going to take that life from you. I am sorry, Mom. You cannot and will never be my God. Beg your pardon. You never loved me. That was why you sold me out. You hit me right from birth, and you sold me out to another person. Mother, a woman who had no need for a girl child 
was forced to nurture a girl child. She gave me everything. She gave me love. I never for once knew that she was not my mother. Mom, you cannot and will never force me to hate her. Listen to me. You can go ahead and have as many countless of meetings as you want. But next time you gather to discuss me, I will kill you. My feet are on the ground to indicate how serious my intentions are and also to demand how effective I want this mission to be. It is a taboo for Bialonama, an evil child stolen at birth, to rise and become this great. They have protected him with all the protections of Umuezu so that it has become difficult for me to kill him. <laughs> I know they cannot protect him from you, Odmoyoyo. I want you to rise through the air and bring him back to Muato, where I can be able to kill him. I want him dead. I want him dead. Go! 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 <laughs> Ukadiki, I don't know why you want to be outside. The last time I saw you, was on the day my father was buried. Please, let's go inside. I've chosen to stand outside because I am in a hurry. But before I take my leave, I want you to answer this question. Are you aware that you are a king today because God permitted you to be king? Yes, Ukadike. I am aware, I agree, that we are nothing without God. I am always consigned with whatever that happens in this kingdom because I am permanently indebted to your father. He was more like a father than just a friend. I am here to see you this night because the threat of death is no more coming from this land. But it is now for your motherland. And I'm here to warn you. Ukatike, please tell me those who are planning my death. Mm. What do you want to do to them? I want to guard against them. To protect myself. You should no longer be be bothered with whatever they plan in this Umar's land. Your concern now should be the threat of death that is coming from your motherland. My father visited me in a dream and he told me to be wary of the people of Umwatu. And I wonder if he knew just before he died that I'm not originally from this land. I 
still haven't been able to get the meaning of that dream. It means exactly what he told you. You should be wary of the men of Omato. They are not comfortable with your rights. They are ganging up to silence you forever. They may come with sweet alpha, but never you be deceived. Don't be enticed. Beneath this witness lies dead. I think the best thing for you to do is to run. No, Ukwadike. I will not run. I will not run from people that seized things that my father left behind. The seized lands from my mother. And when my father passed away, they kicked her out of the house. I will stand and retrieve everything that they seized from my family. That is where discretion comes in. I don't want you to become a coward. I want you to fight for your right, my son. But you must be very careful with men that can pay for your termination. They never liked your face. They can pay heavily to wipe you off the face of the earth. But I want you to remember, you are now a king. And you must learn to walk like kings. I will see you in due course. My leave now. The only thing I understand so far from what you've told me is that you are the only child of the traditional Prime Minister. And I do not know how that concerns me because I do not politic. Chinasa, I have not come here to discuss the politics of the kingdom. You see, God has a reason for bringing two people together. And I believe it is His will that you and I meet. I just want to ask you a favor. Please accept to be my wife. <laughs> um, this is very funny. Today is the first time you and I are talking. And apart from the things you have told me about yourself, I know nothing else. So how can we be talking of marriage? <sighs> Look, I... I like going straight to the point. That was why the first time I saw you, I got hooked. You're a very beautiful woman, and I know men flock around you. Please say yes. I am. Good afternoon, mother. Good afternoon, ma. Please sit down. What's going on? Mother, he's educating me on the customs and traditions of the kingdom. Yeah, yes, exactly, ma. One can. I can see that both of you are getting on well now. If you want to keep coming to this palace, you have to be part of my dream. You know I'd like to be part of it if you tell me what the dream is. I don't have time to waste with you. Look at the time. I wonder what you're doing in my house by this time of the night. Alice, do you realize that you are talking to Ono Uwasaku of Umato? Are you under the illusion that I am afraid of you or have ever been afraid of you? I will appreciate it so much if you can please leave. I mean now. I came here with good news. To give. Why are you so hostile to an unknown that has good news to give? You have been the architect of my problems. 
So what makes you think that I might be interested in any news we've come here to give? Um, anyway, we have decided to release all the parcels of land that we took away from you. Now that it has been established that you have a son, we are no longer going to hold on to them. <laughs> hey, did you ever think that you and Okudli had the land? At times when I look at people's ignorance, I have a good laugh. You people wanted to force me to sign some documents which I vehemently refused. So how could you have possibly owned the land? Listen to me, woman. We were the ones who were cultivating and collecting rent on those parcels of land. So legally, we own them. Anyway, I don't want us to go into the dynamics of the law. Invite your son to come here and we can officially hand over all of it to him. That I should invite my son? Mm -hmm. As if he was there when you people claimed the land. So, I mean, why would you need him to be present for you to release it? Anyway, I am telling you what we have decided. Send for him to come here. Nothing is going to happen without him. Well, if this is all that you've come to say, can you please leave my house? Please leave. Mother, I know you have some rights over me, but you do not have the right to tell me who to marry. My dear, we don't have to argue on this. There are so many things you may not understand in this kingdom, and you need to come down to learn from me. Once you get married to that young man, it means we are getting close to the heart of politics in this kingdom. And I wanted to say it. Are you telling me that you are more concerned with the politics of this kingdom than how I feel? The politics of this kingdom is the most important thing. Every other thing revolves around it. You may not understand. But that young man that came to propose to you is amongst the few young men who make things happen in this kingdom. And for him to just come on his own to ask for your hand in marriage means that God has started answering my prayer. And I wouldn't want you to ruin that plan. I have a military officer who is coming to marry me this October. You must send word immediately to the said military officer. Tell him to look somewhere else. You do not belong to him. Are you not concerned that your mother you met in this palace as her royal majesty, the Noah of Umwezu, has been stripped of her title? You should concern yourself on how to bring back that title to this kingdom. One get it is a hook. And I want you to see it. I am sorry, mother. I will not marry Mwangene. I and the military officer are already engaged. Don't kill me. I'm a man that sits in a position of authority. Eh? I mean, I can influence things in this, our kingdom. Tell me what you want from our land. And you will have it. Please. Time will surely come. When men that are living on the bank of the river would be dying of thirst. They will be looking at the water. But guilt will not allow them to fetch. Osakwe, why do you want to be one of them? Please, if I have offended you, forgive me. Please, why are you seeking the destruction of the star that would bring water? I am sorry. I don't know what you mean by, by destruction of star. I don't know what you mean. Please, please don't kill me. That is your passion. No, no.
Why do you seek the destruction of the star? Who, who is this man? No. Eke? Olye? Afwa? Nkwa? Obotin se de ama. Oli beri be sure de asato. What I don't know will never know me. I will never run away from this my house. And the know who of Omoato. And the strange man cannot plant the seed of fear in me. Man. I'm not going to waste any time over this. You started the process without me. You can continue the process without me. <laughs> Papa, the information you got is wrong. I've not done anything. I merely proposed to her. And I'm asking why you must propose to her. Haven't I been the one urging you to get married? I only wanted to surprise you. Papa, you should be happy I'm bringing home a princess. There is a difference between the Chinasa who returned from Umuatu and all other princesses we know. She is a slave. That she traced her lineage back to Umuazu had not cleansed her. Papa, Chinasa is a bona fide citizen of this kingdom. She is not a slave. Let me tell you one thing. I am the traditional prime minister of this kingdom. You are a free-born citizen of this kingdom. You cannot marry her. Adora, I don't understand what this is all about, Adora. Speak to me in black and white. I want peace. If the diamond's mind is the problem, then I have come to announce to you that Obialunama is ready to leave it for you. He wants peace to reign. You should not be a stumbling block in this peace process. What are you trying to insinuate? That my troublemaker. Our father left a legacy that must be protected. And that legacy does not include Obialanama. Mora, I am sorry you are blind. A man who is now the king of the land becomes the head of the kingdom and nothing happens without him. So, stop seeing him as a stranger. He proved to be a brother and you must see him as that. Listen. This is a precarious case. And seriously, I don't force my hand to make decisions we all regret. And what decisions are you talking about? Because all of you are sounding like broken records. What? The whole lot of you. So I think I will instruct my guards to stop allowing you guys into my house. What? Yeah. I need some peace myself. <laughs> talking about that. What are you trying to do? Walk out on me? Do you realize I am the head princess of this kingdom? And you think I give a rat as who you are? You're blocking my way from moving. You don't know the repercussions. Do you think you can subdue me? Because you are the lord of the Karakats? My friend, stop intimidating everybody. This is the only family we've got. And I am not going to sit down and watch you destroy that family. Say I said that a man will become great in your means. Is anything wrong with one of you becoming great? Sorry, my dear, you have to introduce yourself properly. I'm afraid I don't know you. Who are you? 
Sensible men will always study every angle in a matter before they act. But you relied on hearsay. And now you are waging war against the just. Which war are you talking about? And who do you call the just? There are men that have two eyes. Still they don't see. And there are men with only one eye. And they see extremely well. There are others that are completely blind. They don't see. But they know everything that happens around them. Those are the people I call men among men. Aspire to be like them. Okudele, aspire to be like them. What are you saying? I should aspire to be blind? Men like you that have two eyes do not see. But those that are blind see properly. Aspire to be blind so that you could see. I will come back to you when you need me. But I must leave you with this word. The moon cannot be covered by man the moon cannot be covered by man mm. uh, sorry you didn't tell me your name and uh, where you came from i am okadike okadike milidi obu the realist that lives within the realist that lives within man that struck me in my dream. What has he come to do in this kingdom? What happened yesterday? You said you were coming, but it's a very busy. Have you seen the dailies? Do I have time for papers? My only brother was murdered in cold blood and the police have not been able to make one arrest. Tell me, why should I be reading papers? The, the, the editorial column of current time papers states that the attack was planned and executed by members of Caracas confraternity. That is why the police is not taking the matter seriously. Wait, I've heard a lot about this Caracas confraternity. What do they stand for? It is a very deadly cult. Even more brutal than all the university cults put together. Its members are drawn from children of very wealthy homes. They could kill at the slightest provocation. <laughs> My brother couldn't have been a member of that cult. We're not rich. The papers held that a certain girl was dating one of the members. When she realized he was a cultist, she dumped him. Now, the members found out that she had a new boyfriend in that area. And because of that innocent boy, they raided the whole area. Are they that wicked? How could they kill a countless number of people just because of one girl? Gosh! That goes to show how wicked they could be. Now, the paper stated that they told the police to beam their searchlights on the members. But the issue now is, will they do that?
Dave. What do you know about? What? Caracas. Caracas. It's a confraternity. It's got powers. The highest echelon of government in this country. That's who we are. We are aware of the raid on 17th. Let me explain who we are. When a woman pitches her tent with a member of the confraternity, it's known as the zenith of ecstasy. It's the entirety of manhood. It means you cannot be with anyone else. So when a woman is foolish enough to leave a member of her confraternity and pitch tent with another, another we consider lesser mortal, make a statement out of both of them. That's what happened. So when she left him and went to pitch ten with some idiot in cool camp, we went there. We put him on his knees and we showed him who we were. Were you on that camp that day? I'm the Lord Supremo of the confraternity. I single-handedly brought them to the limelight they enjoyed today. Nobody can breathe without my consent. It was a statement. It was not even personal. And that statement was made. My mother was killed on that street. You call it statement. Don't you know my brother? Don't you know my brother? Answer me. You killed my only brother. You killed my only brother. For what is worth. I had to do what I had to do. Your brother was at the wrong place. At the wrong time. It is called collateral damage. I was powerless to stop all this to be. Did I really to a cop? Did I really learn to a cop? Why did you tell me you really learn to a cop? You did not to me! I don't know what you think. But I must say immediately that we don't have time again. Obialonama has spread his tentacles beyond the boundaries of the East. Now he's associating with weird men of the West. And if you must listen to me, the ideal thing we must do is to lure him to Omuato and kill him. He introduced himself as Okadite. The realist that lives with him. I don't know what you are making of that baseless introduction. The very man that, that attempted to kill me in my dream actually visited you. And you are not bothered. I am not bothered. What I'm saying is that we will strive to get the meaning of all he said. He made a strange statement to you. He equally made a strange statement to me. He may not be from the West as you said. He said he lives within. And I think... Uh, Don't think about anything, Okudele. I am telling you what we are going to do. The man you are calling Anokadike is Obialonama's employee. He has hired him to instill fear in us. The best way we can handle him is to eliminate his master. Eliminate his master and he will stop making further appearances in any, any other place. That man said some words that we cannot dismiss in a hurry. Should I tell you the truth? We have reached a point where we can no longer go back. Settle it in your mind. We are going to Mueso. Um, Angela, if you want me to answer your questions, you must ask clear questions. Okay. Ichi Anebelo. Yes. Is it right for anybody to address a freeborn of this kingdom as a slave? Who is the person that has addressed the freeborn of this kingdom as a slave? 
Well, the identity of the person is not important. I'm a man of Umwiz, and I do everything within my reach to preserve the customs and traditions of our people. I agree with you. And personally, I hold you in high esteem. Each year, yes. as you mean someone elects to marry a girl whose parents are from this kingdom, but somehow by a stroke of fate she was raised outside of this kingdom, would that be tantamount to marrying a slave? No. So long as the blood of this kingdom flows in her veins, she's not a slave. She's a freeborn. Really? Yes. <laughs> Ichi, I'm very grateful. I'm, I'm very grateful. You know, you may not understand what you have done for me now. You're always welcome. But my problem with you is that I don't know why you have decided to work with other number instead of working with us. <laughs> Each year, what I face now concerns my life, my future and my success as a man. It is beyond who becomes queen and who does not become queen. All the same, thank you for the information. I'm really grateful. You're welcome. My dad, don't see it as if I am prognosing interior affairs. You should appreciate the fact that I am your elder sister. Can you just tell me about this military man from Omat? His name is Captain Iweze. He's from Omat. He came into my life and he brought me so much joy. Even when I told him the circumstances surrounding my birth, he didn't change his mind. I am committed to him. And there is no going back. You are making a definite statement which you are not supposed to. We're all thinking the best way forward. I know the best way forward. Which is? Talk to mom. Ask her to let me marry the man after my heart. I am not getting younger. Besides, all my mates are married. Why would mom think I cannot choose my own husband? Why? Should I tell you the truth? I prefer Mwangene to that military man from Mumatu. Now you were beginning to sound and talk like mother. My dear, it goes beyond who is talking like who. I am telling you what is right. Mwangene is like a brother to you. He came on his own and not through our mother. God brought you back for a purpose. And that is for you to marry from here. That was the same thing he said. I know I believe in God. And I know I owe my existence to him. But we cannot verify Mwangane's seriousness. I was just beginning to know him. And then next thing, he wants to marry me. How in the world would anyone take such a person serious? Tell me. If that is the problem, then I tell you that he is serious. Mwangene has lived all his life here in Mwiz. We all know him. If he had proposed to you, then I tell you he is very, very serious. I am very sorry. I cannot forget Captain Iweze just like that. I am not telling you to forget Captain Iweze. Just take your time to think over it. The royal princess. Hello. Hi. How are you? I'm fine. I'm good. And you? Well, all good. Fine. Let's see. I hope I'm not interrupting anything. Not at all. No, I no you're welcome. Thank you very much. Please, you get him a glass cup and a chair. Yes, my princess. Oh, that's very thoughtful of you. Mm -hmm. Your dethronement was not born out of political bias. 
a sacrilege was committed, and the Che Enebelu responded accordingly. Though I'm the traditional prime minister, but I cannot reverse that decision. Reversal should be of rigorous processes, and that is what we are doing. I'm sorry, no. Sincerely speaking, I have not come to discuss the elders of Umezu or whatever decision they might have taken. No. I came so we can discuss the way forward. And uh, which is the way forward? Your son came to the palace and expressed his willingness to marry my second daughter. I'm sure you know the political relevance of that marriage. My daughter told me in confidence that a man from Umuatu wants to marry her. I have come so we can discuss business. I am willing to cancel the engagement with the man from Umuatu and make her marry your son. But you must promise me that you must work for me. Here in Umuizu, we have an age-long tradition. Freeborn don't marry slaves. Slaves marry slaves. My son is a freeborn, and I will not allow him marry a slave. What do you mean by that? Who are you calling a slave? You were delivered of a princess, but you sold her off into slavery. She traced her way back into the kingdom. And now you call her the princess. This is fallacy. Neither the king nor any of the members of the ruling council blessed her. Wake up the king today and he will tell you that he had only one princess whose name is Adora. The returnee you now parade as the princess is not actually a princess. In concrete terms, she is a slave. And I am telling you here and now that I will not allow my son to marry a slave. Oh no. You tell me before my face that my daughter is a slave? That is because she is a slave. So, let her go and marry the man from Umuatu. My son will never marry a slave. Why are you asking me to marry you? Chinasa, I believe you and I are destined for each other. That's why the moment I saw you, I knew you were going to be my wife. Please accept to marry me and you'd make me the happiest man on earth. This is very, very difficult. I have never wanted to end up in the villages. If I marry you, then I will automatically become a village woman. Because I have to stay and live here with you in this kingdom. No, no. Listen, you're talking like you don't know we have a diamond mine here in this village. If you accept to marry me, I'm going to establish you in any city of your choice. And I promise to come and visit you every weekend. I cannot go for a white collar job where we have a diamond mine in this kingdom. No, I'm doing well here and it's a good thing. Jinasa, please, will you marry me? Please. Moira. I sent for you because of this letter that I received from Gladys. And I want to find out from yourself. Did you actually kill her brother? You know, the only reason I came here was because I thought you were going to lift my spirit with the news of Gladys' demise. I didn't come here to be summoned or for you to judge or have an opinion in my private life. Gladys is a liability in my life. And I was happy when she left. 
and nothing will please me more than the news of her death. Keep in the letter. It was addressed to me. Now, Moira, I am very disappointed. Very disappointed in you. Why would you soak your hands in blood? Do you not know that the protection we inherited from our father forbids you from doing that? Why would you kill someone? You know what we should be discussing here, King? It's your transition to a martyr kingdom where you rightfully belong. Now things have cleared up finally. I don't know what you're still doing in this kingdom. You're a stranger in this land. Your biological father is buried in Umatu. You're a son of Umatu. So what are you doing here? You can't come in here and bamboozle out with your manipulation of evil powers. With all the powers that you acquired from Um Okadike. It can happen. I'm a bona fide prince of this land. And the throne that you presently sit is the throne of my forefathers. And come what may, I will sit on your throne. Mora, whether you like it or not, I am still king. I am the king. Why are you still fighting this your failed war? Well, it's failed only in your eyes. But the bigger picture is different. It's just a question of time, King. Time. Are you under the illusion whatsoever that I am wearing this crown by the use of charms? It doesn't matter. But the chief factor here is that I don't suffer illusions. Trust me. I have a firm grip on reality. And I know what reality Time will set in. Because even charms have deadlines. And when that happens, we shall see who will triumph at the end. Mom, I do not like the look on your face. I have accepted his proposal. See the ring he gave me today. I'm sorry, my dear. You must return that ring to Mangeme. Why, Mom? I have already accepted it. Ring is nothing but a piece of jewelry. It means nothing. You are not going to end up in that family. They're not worthy to have you as your wife. How can you say such a thing, mother? Mwangene was here today, and we spent a lot of time discussing. He told me so much about his family, and from what he told me, I think I am comfortable. His father opened his mouth and called you a slave. He told me that. Now I am asking you, Mother, am I a slave? You mean he actually told you that? Oba Aranya is not a good man at all. I know him very well. I know him. See, if his son ventures to marry a girl he does not approve of, he will frustrate that marriage. You must return that ring to Wangene. Don't you think it is too late for me to return the ring? Mm -mm. You cannot marry a slave. That same girl was the reason why the Queen Mother was dethroned. She now parades herself as the princess. She is a slave. Iche Nebel, my son told me you said he could marry her. Why? Mangana, you didn't tell me the exact reason you were asking those questions. Now you know. We all know the circumstances surrounding her exchange at birth. We all also know that Igwe Kulukaralo was her father and the dethroned queen her mother. Now, Papa, let me ask. Can we legitimately call her a slave? And let us remember that it is an abomination here in Umuizu to punish somebody for an offense he or she has not committed. 
she realized she's not from Umuatu, but from Umuizu. And she came back and identified with us. Papa, can we really call her a slave? She's not a slave. What did I hear you say? You heard me right, Oba. We can't call her a slave because she's not one. She's a noble citizen of this land. And if your son has decided to make her his wife, then we lend our support. Can I ask you a question? Go ahead, sir. Was she blessed by the late king or any of the ruling class? His Majesty, Igor Bialanama, blessed her and made her part of royalty. We can't change that. If you want to know what a woman will develop into, look at her mother. You cannot marry the daughter of a mad woman. So, Papa, it would be right to say that her mother is the problem and not her. I have taken a decision that must be respected. I am the traditional prime minister of this kingdom. And you cannot marry any woman without my consent. Uh, Osakwe, the only reason why I came back here is to address you so that all the spirits here will witness what I am going to tell you. All the things you said in Umwez from, be from beginning to the end are all lies. Yes, you took us to Umwez simply to insult us. And uh, I am beginning to regret why I followed you. Oh, 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 wait. It's your Zobel. Are you saying you are comfortable with the fact that our son is a king in another land and we don't have a king. Is that what you're saying? I am not part of this. I am not part of this at all. That young man is your nephew and he has risen by the hand of God to be a king in another land. He's been appreciated by his subjects. You want to bring him here to make him redundant? Eh? Oh. Ozobel, that's why you followed me to my house when other elders have gone to their various rooms and uh, satisfied. Eh? Oh, good. Look at Ozobel. That is why his father did not erect a single hut of his own. He lived in his father's house till the day he died. Oh, no. Let me see your leg here. Oh, no, we'll sit down. Ah! Sit down. Sit down, please. He said his wife that will feed him. He come here. He did not fear. He's talking to me like that. Oh, no, we'll sit down. have to return it to Wangani. Mom, I do not understand you. How long are we going to break my role over this issue? Why would you ask me to return the ring? Some elders from Omato said they found out that Abelanama is their son. So they want him to be their king. You know what I found out? Wangene, that idiot is opposing the idea. Now tell me, Chinasa, why on earth would you want to marry a man who is waging war against your own mother? Why? Mom, if Wangene actually squared up to the elders like you said, then I think he is reliable. And I also feel he is the right man for me. I'm out of your senses. How can you say he's the right man for you? I'm very sorry, Mom, but I want to know what the problem is. Is it Obialunama, my brother, or who? Are you 
still calling me your brother? Didn't you hear when I told you that some elders from Mumuatu said he's their son? One girl must be an imbecile to oppose that idea. Mother, I want to get one thing clear here. What is the problem? Are you suggesting that Obialunama relinquishes the crown and follow these people to Mwatu? Exactly. Now you got it. Huh. The crown belongs to my son, Mora. They only use some hard charm to deny him. But today, the lost mask is gradually finding its way back to the true owner. So, Obelonoma will go back to Matu, and my son Mora will be crowned king. <laughs> I'm sorry, but what you're saying would never be possible. We, the youth of this kingdom, have taken a decision, and we are ready to challenge the elders. Who are you working for? I'm not working for anybody. I'm only trying to ensure that this kingdom is not brought to ridicule. In this kingdom, kings emerge to rule until they die. That is how it has been, and that is how it would remain. We shall see. What's going on? pursuing a different agenda and I'm not going to make myself available for her constant manipulations. Is it possible for us to get married without her consent? Yeah. Look, you and I have the final say here. I mean, you and I decide what happens. Yes, our parents are singing discordant tunes and I think the best thing for us to do is disregard them. Go ahead with our noble intention. Noble intentions? Yes. No, 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 wait. Are you saying you're going to disobey your father and <laughs> marry me? Of course. See, baby, my father and I have never really gotten along well, and you know that. So I think I'm going to disagree with him this one more time, and I'm going to marry you. Yes. You impress me every single minute. That's the whole idea, probably. Sit down, then. What's the idea? Um, the youth are supporting Abdelanama better. I made it clear to him that he must go back to Umat. It's your name, No. I have not come to talk about Abdelanama. Umat. Or whatever. I have come to ask you, who paid you? Who paid me? What kind of question is that? Who paid me for what? You heard me right. My son has been murdered. <laughs> you heard me right. My son was murdered in a drinking parlor. And it has been confirmed that the same boys you use killed my son. I ask you, why did you kill my son? Why? I'm sorry, no. I'm telling you the truth. I didn't kill him. I didn't send anybody to kill your son. Okay. 
Let me show you. Where they gone? Talk to me! Nobody paid me. I did not kill your son. Why are you talking like this? Only until you know he's a hard assassin who kills once he's paid. I'm telling you the truth. I didn't send anybody to kill your son. Please put away the gun. Huh? And uh, remember, he could have stepped on anybody's toes. And I heard that he belonged to a cult confraternity. So, there could be missiles anywhere. So many people you meet every day. Some will try to lead you astray. They will cause you pain and take away your joy. But your destiny, no man can destroy. No one can cover. Alice, I am here to apologize over all the wrongs I did you in the past. It has dawned on me that men cannot cover the moon. And I have come to realize that your son, Obianama, is the moon that has risen to provide us with light. Even as we pass through the dark side of this life. Do you know what? I am impressed with your choice of words. But to tell you the truth, I don't believe you. I know you won't believe me. And I must tell you, I understand your reasons. But I'm here to tell you the truth from the bottom of my heart. It was Uno Wasakwe that lured me into the wickedness we unleashed on you. I have found out eventually that men cannot cut a man that heaven has not cut. I know you have a way to reach your son in Umwezu. Please, tell him never to come here. Uno Wasakwe has perfected a plan how he would die once he comes into this land. Are you telling me that we are no longer with Osakwe? Men with their conscience intact do not wallow in evil for long. I want you to know that I'm now on your side. And to prove this, all the parcels of land I personally got from the share of what we seized from you. I hear surrender all. Most importantly, do not allow your son to set his foot on this land until I have made nonsense of all the charms or no Osakwe prepared simply to kill him. Yes. I was planning to inform you later, but I didn't know he already told you. Well, he had already spoken to me before he came to tell you. And he had kept me posted every step of the way. You must realize that Wangene is one of the few men that live above board in our land. My father regarded him as a very credible man. And I've come to see that I cannot do without him. I'm happy you like him. Mother has changed her mind towards him because he refused to do what she asked him to do. I was told, and that is what I am yet to find out. I need mother to explain a few things to me because the integrity of this kingdom has been undermined. And I need her to clarify things. Mother returned this evening 
and went straight to her chambers. She didn't even respond to my greeting. I later went in to ask her if she would want to take anything. She said no and that she wouldn't want to see anyone again. She actually responded without even opening her door. I don't know, but I think something is troubling her. Well, I will check on her later. Lest I forget, I want you and I to go to Umuatu tomorrow. Umuatu? What are we going there to do? I'm sorry. I do not want to go to Umuatu again. Chinasa, I owe your mother as much as you owe mine. They brought us up in their own separate ways. And we are what we are today. Please, I need you to go with me to convince my mother to abandon her contract business and come and live here with us. I need to take care of her in her old age. I am king. You're the only one she can listen to. My mother would not be happy to know that I am part of the process that brought your mother into this kingdom. Because she has a fear. She has a fear that I want to bring my mother to be the queen mother of this land. And it is impossible. I just want her to live here with us, under my care. Sleep in the same house I sleep in. And wake up in the morning knowing that my mother is close. Is that too much for a son to ask of his mother? Thank you. So, tomorrow morning, you will wait for me by the mango tree at the village square. Because I don't want anybody to know we are going to what. And once I come back, when we return, we will talk about your wedding with Wangan. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Let me check on mother now. Please come. Good morning, my princess. Good morning. Please, uh, I just opened my... I, I tried to open my door now, but it's locked. I can't open it. I, I don't know what happened. Can you help me check it? Yes, my princess. My princess, the door is locked. I'm coming. I know she sent you to open the door. I don't want you to go near her windows again. She has to stay in that room until the madness in her eyes clear. Is she mad? Go and find yourself something else to do. Don't go near her windows again. And if... Thank 
Ekwe Ekwe So, how is your sister? Mother, she's fine. I left her in the palace. I was even supposed to come with her so she can help me convince you to come to Umuizu. But she couldn't make it. Son, to be sincere with you, I'm not talking about your offer. I am more concerned about your safety. Ichie Okudili was here to warn me that you should not come to this village again. He said that um, Ono Uwosakwe has perfected plans to eliminate you. Oh, mother, please, don't even worry yourself. I am not here to discuss that. I am here because I want to take you to Umwezu. I am kin, sitting as the president of a functional mind. Let me take care of my mother in her old age. I don't want you involved in any form of work or business whatsoever. Let me take care of you, mother, please. Well, if that is what you really want. Yes, mother. For me to fold up my business and follow you to Umwez. No problem. If that will make you happy. Hmm? Yes, it will, mother. Send the driver to pick me up before noon. I will send the driver to pick you up tomorrow. <laughs> hey, uh, let me. We we'll we'll eat Mama's food now. Uh -huh. <laughs>
Why are you doing this to me? You're making me regret why I came to Umweze. I will never set you free unless you are ready to swear on both your life and your father's grave that you have to denounce all that number. As long as you're not willing to do that, you will remain in that room until you die. I will not denounce my brother. You are in the dark, my dear. And you are going to die in the dark. He is not your brother. You have killed Muara. Obianulama is the only brother I have. And I will not denounce him. I will not. Okay. I am leaving now. I'll come back before dark and see whether you have changed your stand. Yeah, I don't like your countenance this afternoon. Is anything the matter? The queen, the, the, the queen has a point of immediate correction. There is no queen in this land at the moment. The woman you refer to as the queen has been dethroned. Therefore, you must not address her as the queen. I'm sorry, sir. But Madame has locked Princess Chinasa up in her room and has ordered that no one should open for her. The worst of it all is that she has not eaten anything since morning. <laughs> you are joking, right? Tell me you are joking. Why would I? Why in this world would I play with such a serious issue? Honestly, what I'm saying is exactly what has happened. If you doubt me, you know the way to her room. She locked the door and seized the key. She has not eaten since morning. Ask my mother to see me. Okay, immediately. Most power. Let me have the key. One again. Take the key. Open the door and ask your answer to see me. At once. Sir, I am terribly sorry. I had no idea the mother had locked you up. Otherwise, I would have waited for you. I'm very sorry. I was ready as early as 7 in the morning. Just when I wanted to meet up with you, I realized my door was locked. I was there until he rescued me. I have this feeling that something is influencing the action of the dethroned queen mother. And I think it would be right if we found out what it is, nip it in the bud before we continue with the marriage. Well, I learned from my father. 
that you should not waste your time trying to advise someone who will not regard your advice. Mother has a problem and we all know it. Until she will avail herself, I wonder who will go to her and say, hey, I want to help you. She asked me to denounce you or else she was going to leave me to die there. Mother said that? Yes. I see. Well, there is this rumor going around that Mother killed Ichi Inubilu. A lady saw her walk out of the compound. A few hours later, he was found dead in his living room, shot at close range. It's been investigated though. But whatever the case, whatever is happening in this palace or in this kingdom, I want both of you to know that you will get married. Come what may. Can you look straight into my eyes and tell me you don't know what happened to Ichi Nebelu? I, I could swear on my life. I am as confused as every other person. Why would someone want to kill a man like Ichi Nebelu? I am not comfortable with a lot of things. Why are you here? No. No. An old man does not forget the dance step and the dance she mastered as a girl. Mm, that's an adage of our people, but how does it concern the, the discussion on hand? I once made you an offer of 50 million naira, which you turned down. I, I have come to the conclusion that you cannot be enticed by money. I have come to give you myself. And I know, I know you will value my body more than money. You are still the Prime Minister of this kingdom. And I don't know why you don't want to look at the queen, even when the king is dead and is almost forgotten. I don't want your son to marry Chinasa. And I don't want you to allow Madame Alice to live in this kingdom. You want me to do that? Yes. That's exactly what I want you to do. I came prepared. I'm going to spend the night with you. And I will leave at Cockrow at dawn. It's okay. I'll do it. I just want you to do it for me. I will. Shiny, what will be, will surely be, no one can stop your destiny. 